Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for your email. I'm Lee Sackberry and today I'm going to be your ear doctor and any other time that you need me. Now, I have an email and this is a response. As you can see, I'm here at my desk responding to your email. And I wanted to give you a video response and I'm going to share this video response. If you notice, I've taken certain things out. I've taken your age out. I did go on and mention that you are a black woman, but we're going to say black woman. We're not going to say old. <laughs> and I know you're just saying whatever your number you're old, but we're just going to take that out. Kind of a sensitive spot for me. Also, I took out your name because I want to share this response to my other subscribers, my cyber family, because I think this will benefit a lot of women. So I hope that you don't mind. All right. So first you said you recently subscribed to my YouTube page. Yay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. My YouTube channel. So you're not sure if I've already have a video that covers your questions. I said a bit of background about you. You are, you said that you're a black female and you're at a certain age and you have, you suffer with hair loss from traction alopecia. So let's go on and highlight that. And I did highlight some things below, but I want to highlight traction alopecia to address what that is. Traction alopecia, for those of who may be reading this or listening to this that may not know, it's where you have stress on the follicle. The follicle is being pulled too much through braids, um, weave. It can be pulled through ponytails where this pull beyond the amount of elasticity that's within that strand as well as the elasticity within the skin and around the follicle itself. It's pulled literally out of the follicle and sometimes it's permanent and sometimes it's not depending on if there was inflammation behind it where the skin around the follicle scarred or whether there was just a pull where it broke right in the mouth of the follicle. If it was scarred, it would damage permanently. If it didn't scar, it would um, it would not damage permanently. Some ways it's just going to be temporary is if it breaks right in the mouth of the follicle, as I said, or if it damages first degree skin damage, the mouth of the follicle begins to self-pollute and then it temporarily damaged. Okay, so you said that you went to the dermatologist and was told that the scalp looked healthy and that your hair should grow back. So for six months, um, for six months you received scalp injections. So I'm just a little confused if it was healthy, why the injections? But I guess you'll email me and tell me what he said about the, I'm sure he had a reason for the, or she had a reason for the injections. Injections basically are, there. it's just steroid usually, and it helps with inflammation, and it helps with inflammation around the actual follicle, within the follicle. When that is treated, then generally you will be able to stimulate some form of growth as you remove that inflammation and that's what the injections are generally used for. So you mentioned that you had injections. Um, now you also mentioned that you took certain types of, of supplements and medications and things of that sort. So we're just going to go on and highlight all those things that you took here and we're going to put a highlight there. Now, this one is a really kind of a, oops, and I didn't highlight this one. This is a t kind of a tied tongue. So I'm going to attempt to pronounce this, this medication, and then you can um, go on. You can just type it in, and it'll give you a correct pronunciation. Basically, the way it's pronounced is spironolactone. So spironolactone or spironolactone, spironolactone. Okay, so that is the correct, to my knowledge, pronunciation of it, spironolactone. Now spironolactone is really kind of a diuretic or water pill, and it's usually prescribed for people who have high blood pressure, and 
other things like swelling due to extra fluid on the body systems. And it also has some other benefits. And, and we found that um, many of your, your physicians will um, subscribe this if there's a polycystic ovary syndrome, like or PCOS. It's really where they'll describe that for that condition. And that deals with your hormones. You know, you have um, irregular ovulation, irregular periods, things like that. So you'll find that this particular drug will be recommended for that. But it's also recommended for women who are showing like slowing hair loss because of um, like a slow path toward hair loss, that diffuse hair loss within the crown Generally, you find that sometimes the hairline, but mostly with the crown. And that's due to the imbalance of your hormones. It can be where you have a, a elevation of your testosterone levels as we get older. and you, Or you could have a situation where your estrogen levels are dropping. So if any of those things are going on, you may find this drug being... Um, Prescribe. Now, it's really important to indicate or let you know that when you have a imbalance in hormones, this drug is really trying to help you to balance this. In balance, you can, it can affect the hair. It doesn't always. The follicle has to be sensitive to that. It can affect the way the hair grows, the way the follicle functions. The follicle has to be sensitive, and it's not always the case. Some primary care physicians may give you let um, say 75 to 200 milligrams per day of this in a high dose if you're having high blood pressure and some other problems. But um, they also will do it because they feel it's effective in treating excess um, hair growth due to these hormonal changes. They just want to do several things to balance your hormones, which is the, the case. So, I mean, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a trichologist. But these are things that I know about this through it for, from research that I know about this particular medication. So I would highly um, recommend you go back and ask a few more questions about why that's being done. Now, you also mentioned a multivitamin. You mentioned biotin, uh, D3, folic acid, and um, you mentioned the fish oils and the omega-3 um, and you receive monthly B12 injections. Let's just kind of talk about these um, for just a moment. Now, let's look at the multivitamin with biotin. Biotin helps to produce protein, protein called keratin, which is what hair is mostly composed of. So that's really crucial to have um, that vitamin biotin, especially in cases where you're losing hair, that may indicate that you have a problem with that deficiency. So that will be a good supplement. Let's look at vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 produced by the body is pretty much produced itself when it's exposed to like sunlight uh, or things of that sort. Um, but uh, vitamin D3 is pretty, it's a hormone and it, it's it's important that um, we have that because it plays a very important role in dealing with our calcium and um, other things as it relates to our body. I mean, I could go on and on. So really, technically, vitamin D is not a, or vitamin D3 is really not a, a vitamin because the body can produce it. Um, so we have to look at this and say a vitamin D3 is really a part of this whole little uh, complex that we deal with. In other words, I'm really saying it's more more complex than we really understand or and it's a lot of us in our le level of understanding as relates to vitamin D because it it. it it's begin, it, it will produce itself within the body when it's exposed to certain things like sunlight and, and ultraviolet light and those kinds of things. So vitamin D is important. All right, so we want to say that it's important. 
but you can find it in a natural way, like in your leafy greens. Uh, I talk about this in my book, Every Woman's Guide to Beautiful Hair. If you're a vegetarian, if you can find it in liver and um, so there are things, ways that you can find it if you don't um, have it within um, if you don't have it within the body systems, if you don't have it. So there are different ways. But anyways, let's go to the next one. Uh, what did you say? You said vitamin, I mean folic acid. Well, folic acid is, is major important because folic acid helps all your tissues to grow through the various cells. So as your body begins to differentiate those um cells mean they become different and become specialized so that they form actually hair then it's important to have that good balance so it helps with the proliferation of the tissue so it helps them to grow and multiply helps them to differentiate and it helps those cells to work well I mean it's included in your nails your skin other organs and it helps with many things so it's really, the folic acid is really important to hair growth. So I could see you having to take that. But it seems like we could multi this all. I don't know if this is what you've done. Uh, vitamin uh, with fish oil and omega-3s, they're very important. Um, the heart healthy, hair healthy, they're just very important to have. You can get that if you're vegan in other forms. You don't have to necessarily do fish oil. You can find those in flax seeds. Those are really important as well. That's what I do. I'm a vegan. So I grind up flax seeds and I put them in everything. On salads and smoothies, flax water. I just kind of get uh, finely grind up seeds, put them in a bottle of water and shake it up. So then I get that. You said you mentioned the B12 injections. B12 is important for normal formation of blood, red blood cells and it gives you unhealthy nerve tissues. Those are what research shows us. Um, when you're deficient in B12, all kinds of things could cause. You can have problems. You can have problems with hair loss. Um, it can, it can, your hair loss can, can happen for different reasons and those reasons can be okay so let me just kind of shorten this up at the end of the day hair loss can occur for a number of different reasons including a poor diet not enough of the certain nutrients uh, think about iron or vitamin b12 and d all these 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 can, things can interfere with your uh, healthy hair growth but at the end of the day some of these vitamins have basically came in a complex I mean, think about it. You've got your water-soluble vitamins. They all accept your vitamin C. These You're going to have vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, B5, all of these, B6, um, B12. Those things are your folic acid, your biotin. Those things, all these are very important, but you want to have an overall healthy body to have overall healthy hair growth but let me just tell you this traction alopecia does not come from a deficiency within the body systems of our vitamins and nutrients it does not come from your hormonal imbalance it comes from damage to the surface of the skin there are two categories of hair loss quickly I'll say this one category is external and one is internal. Internal is determined by some things that happen within the body systems that can cause a problem with how your follicles function. External happens on the surface of the skin. Traction, alopecia is external. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. You said, unfortunately, there's not much of a change, so the dermatologist recommend that you also start Rogaine. So here we go. So now that you, he, he realized these are not going to work because traction alopecia is external. Now he's saying let's go to Rogaine. Rogaine, the key ingredients to make Rogaine, the most active ingredients is minoxidil. Okay, so Rogaine helps with um, internal follicular problems within 
the follicle and how it functions, how it grows. So Rogaine will not help you either if this is traction alopecia. Now I can't guarantee it's traction because I haven't done the examination, but you have a clear examination and diagnosis of traction alopecia. Then Rogaine will not help and none of these supplements that you recommend, the spironolactone, spironolactone, nor these other vitamins will help traction alopecia. It would help the skin to be healthier, some of your supplements, but it would not help the traction alopecia. I wanted to address that before I got to your your questions because you have first and second questions. I do not want, you, you said, I do not want to have to use Rogaine for the rest of my life. So I went to a consultant to consult my hairstylist. Okay, so here we go. You got your hairstylist involved. We're going to highlight her or him. I was told that I did not have a, a lot of shedding, but along with alopecia, I could be over manipulating my hair. Hmm, now some of that's true. See, this sounds good because over manipulating could be detangling, stretching out the hair, uh, pulling the hair traction. It could fall under that. Recently, I had a full sew in and weave installed. And that's a good way to put it. Weave installed because it's like an installation. It's like, it's, wow. But anyways, because sometimes they just a major way is put in and so negative. I'm hoping that letting my hair rest will do it some good. Now, when you have a weave applied to your hair, that's not necessarily letting your hair rest because having weave applied to your hair could cause more traction. So what you want to make sure of is that your hair is weave is tight to the braid, not to the scalp. Now, how do you know that? When she puts the braid in, she puts it in secure. Then she's going to use her thread and she's going to uh, secure that braid, but not pull it to the scalp. Just make sure it's closed and tight where there's a nice line there. And then she's going to take the weft and she's going to sew that weft. And you can let your stylist hear this. Sew that weft to that braid and make that weft tight to the braid without pulling the scalp. So she'll have her finger there and she'll pull that tight to the braid, but she does not pull the scalp. That way there's no traction involved and the weave will hold itself in place. Okay, so you're not letting your hair rest by doing that. Okay, so my first question is, do your first question is, do I recommend anything besides Rogaine to reverse traction alopecia. Rogaine will not help traction alopecia. So I do not recommend Rogaine for traction alopecia. What you want to do is create a, an environment on the surface of the skin. There's several things, but the first thing is create an environment on the surface of the skin so the skin is healthier, the skin begins to heal itself, and you begin to have so let's see, I move that down. The skin begins to heal itself and you begin to have a healthier environment for that skin to have good elasticity. You, you know, there's so many things. Let's do this. Let's undo. There we go. So you have the skin has elasticity and it's healthier around the mouth of the follicle. Now, how do you do that? That's the first thing you do. And how do you do that? The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your skin is treated. So each night, there's a scalp treatment I recommend on my site. And it's called Level 3. Each night, you put a drop of the Level 3 around that skin and blot it right in to the, inf the infected area. And once you do that, and that's the affected area, once you do that, then you're going to just put your your moisturizers or whatever else you're going to put around the hair and you go to bed. The second thing you want to do is you want to make sure that there's no more traction. If you're going to wear your sew-in or braids or whatever you're going to wear, you got to make sure that they're not pulling the hairline. You part all that hairline here away from the hairline and move it forward 
and then they braid or sew behind that. The hairline hairs are small and they cannot tolerate that kind of pulling. So treat that area with our scalp treatment level three nightly and you really you could do once in the morning and once at night blotting it in do not rub and stop all traction stop all pulling of any type take that hairline smooth it forward and allow it to lay against um, the front the facial area and then smooth it down with moisturizer Rogaine will not help traction the second question you said is there certain protective styles that are not good for not good for traction alopecia when I take my sew in weave out I was thinking I may have box braids installed in my online research I found some information that says it's okay and and some search research that says definitely not and then said thank you in advance for any information you can provide very good okay so this is what you want to keep in mind and oh, and I, I want to show you something too because I, I did go on and sound out and this is probably not how it will be sound out anywhere else but I just did sound out this word spironolactone spironolactone that may help you as well okay but um, traction alopecia stems from excess pulling of, and inflammation within the follicle excess pulling on the follicle so any style that causes that will be problematic. So this is why you have some people say yes to box braids and some people say no. The goal is to wear any style you want to wear. Just don't pull the hairline. That's it. Don't pull the hairline. Don't pull any point of departure on your scalp. That means whether it's in your crown, wherever it is, don't pull that hair. So tight, braid tight to the, the hair don't break tight to the scalp now you may ask how am I going to do that when hair is an appendage of the scalp you don't pull you make sure that you can get just the tipping of your nail or almost finger underneath make sure it can move so that that when you lay down on it or when you pull it back you're not pulling that skin alright so I'm hoping that this helped I'm Lisa Ackberry, your hair doctor. I'm going to go on and put my email address at the top of this page just to make sure you have it. And we'll put it right here next to my name. Oopsie. And that's Lisa at LisaAckberry.com. Lisa at LisaAckberry.com. You can email me and I will continue to email you back. This was a great, great group of questions and I'm praying that everyone will benefit from it. Thank you so much. Have a blessed, wonderful day, evening, or morning.